Hi there, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship with the fifth part in our video series on test-driven development in Java. If you've not watched the first four videos, I highly recommend you take a look at those first. There'll be a link in the description below. This is going to be a two-parter and we're going to be talking about the about two approaches to test-driven design, inside-out design and outside-in design. And we'll be looking at their, their relative advantages and disadvantages. And we're going to start by talking about inside-out TDD. So inside-out TDD just means that we start by test driving internal parts of our implementation before putting, together, putting them all together at the end for a complete solution. And to illustrate this, um, I've been doing the Mars Rover Cata again. Uh, a link also in the description below. Um, but I've been approaching it this time from the inside out. So what I've been doing, if we just take a look at some of my tests here, is I've been writing unit tests for parts of the implementation. For example, a method on our Rover class for turning it to the right, or a method on our Rover class for turning it to the left, and for going forward and for going back. And also I've got a helper method here that maps characters, F for forward, B for back, R for left, and L for right, onto the appropriate method so that we can essentially map our sequences of instructions onto sequences of commands. Um, so I've, I've test-driven all of the pieces of the jigsaw, if you like, and now I'm going to put the jigsaw together at the end to create a method that accepts a sequence of instructions, F, R, L, or um, F, B, L, or R, um, and then executes those instructions. So that's kind of the end point. So we've done done the internal parts, and now we're going to finish off by essentially creating the API for our rover, which is going to be a method that accepts a sequence of instructions. So we're going to have to assert that the instructions were executed. So let's start by asserting what direction it should end facing. And so in this test, I'm going to have my rover start facing north, and then on the first instruction is going to turn it to the right. So it should end up facing east. So working backwards from the assertion. And now let's declare our rover. And it's going to start facing north. And we're going to put it, I've been doing for the most part, I've been starting them all at 5.5, five, so there's room to move it in whichever direction we need to. And I'm also going to assert, so on the subject of how many reasons your test have, should have to fail, this test is going to execute a sequence of instructions. So we need, it's going to turn it and it's going to move it. So we need to make two assertions that it ends up facing in the right direction and it ends up in the, in the right position on the grid. So um, let's assert that it ends up at, um, for example, 5, 7. So if we turn it to the east and then make it go forward twice, then it should end up two squares in the x, in, sorry, two squares in the x direction, which is the wrong way around, isn't it? So it'd be 7, 5. Okay. Those should be curly braces. And we get the position of our rover, which is an integer array. Okay. Now what we need to do is tell our rover where to go. So rover go, this is a method that currently doesn't exist. And here's our sequence of commands. We want it to turn right, and then we want it to go forward, and then forward again. Let's create that method. And for now, because it's not actually doing anything, so let's run our test and see what happens. So we're expecting it's just going to end up exactly where it currently is. And indeed it does. So to pass this, um, what we could do is, um, 
we turn our string here instructions or instructioner because I misnamed that I will fix that in a minute so let's create um, our cars array which is actually an array of integers representing the characters let's do it for each and for each of those characters um, we're going to map to the right command we'll need to cast it there so that it's actually a character and then we're going to run each of those runnables that are returned so hopefully that will work lovely okay so now now that's the final that's the the high level requirement that's our kind of entry point to the rover um, and what we've done is we've We've test driven all the pieces of that jigsaw, the methods to turn it left and right and forward and make it go forward and back, and a method to map um, characters onto um, commands, onto runnables. And then what we've done at the end is we put all those pieces of the jigsaw together um, and essentially created our, our, our input to the system, this go method. Okay, let me just fix that. Um... And rerun our tests. No, not instructions. Silly Jason. There we go. And now let's rerun our tests. Oh, it's having a little think. Okay. And there we go. So that's inside out TDD. Um, it does, of course, require that you need to do a little bit of thinking about what that internal design is going to be. So in a legitimate inside-out approach with perhaps a more complex design that might involve multiple objects, we would sit down and maybe do a sequence diagram or use class responsibility collaboration cards or some technique for, for planning out roughly what the high-level internal design of this implementation is going to be. And then that can guide us to writing unit tests for each of those key parts. Um, the advantage of this approach, if we just take a look at our tests here, is that each of our tests pinpoints a specific part of the internal design, a specific piece of the jigsaw, um, so that when that test fails, we've got a pretty good idea of not just what's gone wrong, but where it's gone wrong in our call stack, in in, where inside that internal design should we actually look to figure out what's gone wrong. So that has that advantage, um, but it also has disadvantages. Um, and if we take a look at our tests, they know a lot about the internal design of our rover. They know about the right, the left, the forward, the back, and the maps of command methods. So we have unencapsulated our internal design and exposed our test code to a lot of internal details, which means it's going to be harder if we want to refactor that internal design or change it in some way. We're going to also have to rewrite quite a lot of our test code as well. So that's a disadvantage. It, it more closely couples our tests to our code. And, and if you end up writing tests for every part of the internal design, the effect can, in terms of coupling can be a bit like sort of melting cheese into a radio. So the, the, the melted cheese sticks to every internal component. Um, and then you end up with test suites that are too tightly coupled to their internal design. So so that's a, a, a big disadvantage. And the other disadvantage that the inside-out approach can have is that we test drive all the pieces of the jigsaw and then we find when we try to put the jigsaw together at the end, the pieces don't fit together and that we actually haven't um, satisfied the end user's requirement. So one advantage, these kinds of tests pinpoint problems much more readily. It's much easier to figure out where something has gone wrong and if you have a complex, multi-layered design, um, as many of us are working on, um, that can that can end that can have us ending up in the debugger far more often than I would probably like. But the disadvantages are it unencapsulates that internal design, and which means our test codes are too tightly coupled if we're not careful to the details of the the implementation, and also there is the very real risk that when we put the pieces of the jigsaw together they end up not fitting. 
So in the next video, we're going to look at how we can drive our designs from the outside in that will get us over some of those disadvantages.